For those of you that just landed, I'm Emeril Lagasse. You know, all around the world, people are getting ready for their own holiday celebrations. Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, Christmas. Everyone has their own family traditions, but they all have two very important things in common. Family and food of love, baby, food of love. <laughs> As a holiday tribute, I'm cooking up some delicious dishes tonight like Emerald's special latkes for Hanukkah, a sugar cane baked ham with spiced apples, Christmas, and a delicious roasted stuffed pork tenderloin with smothered black eyed peas for Kwanzaa. That's gonna blow your mind. Yeah. It's all happening right here. You know where, right? Right here in Emerald Live. Another quiet show, Hilda. <laughs> I'm so happy, you know, Santa was good to me. I got like brand new jackets. Check it out, huh? Yeah. They're like little tents. I can just drop in there after all that. Brand new aprons. I mean, woo. And uh, you know, I had to always kind of think about my good friend Doc Gibbs, because Doc Gibbs is in the house, everybody. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, you know, Doc, you and I were kind of always, like, you know, talking about drums and pots and pans right, and stuff. So right. I, uh, I got a couple of new instruments for us. I got this uh, Idaho potato. <laughs> I got that right there. Wow. And uh, when spud. you're feeling blue, yeah, spud. It's a spudly thing. Wow. I got a little, when you get into that, like, Mexican kind of Latin feeling. Yeah, yeah. I got a little avocado oh. for you too, baby. Oh, oh, man. So, guacamole. you know, it's all right. Hey, Holy guacamole, as they yeah. say, you know? <laughs> it's all just a little treat. Great, you know? I'll be back to them, Doc. All right. It's all good. Then, of course, I got the miniature ones over here that I hmm. got for last holiday from you. Nice. So they we'll we'll, uh, we'll check it out later on. All yeah. right. All right. You doing all right, babe? Potato latkes. Man, I'm so excited about this. It's a food of love thing. And uh, basically what I want to show you is that we took peeled potatoes, very simple. Uh, you want to use a high starch potato. This is an Idaho potato, but really a russet potato will work. You want one that has a good starch, peel it. And then just with like a hand grater, you can either this, you know, there's all kinds of different ones. You just want to grate the potato. One of the tricks that I want to tell you though, is that when you do that, you want to, you see the difference here, the air is going to oxidize the potato. If you peel them, uh, as you uh, are going to make any kind of potato dish, when you peel a potato, if you don't have it in water uh, and you let it expose to the air, it's going to start turning brown and apples will do the same thing because they oxidize. So they get kind of nasty. So you want to be able to grate it right when you're ready. If you uh, are pressed for time, you can always moisten a little paper towel or damp uh, linen-free sort of cloth that you can wet, and then you can set it on top, and that will help uh, with the oxidation and not keep, uh, keep the potatoes as white as possible. Okay, lots of onions. Very, very thin sliced onions that we're going to add in there. Oh, yeah, it's an onion thing. I mean, hey. <laughs> All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take just a tiny, tiny bit of oil. I'm using an, an olive oil, not a, not a virgin olive oil, just a regular, like a pomace oil. And then uh, we're going to add a couple of eggs in here, and the eggs are going to just sort of bind it. Uh, and latkes are used and served all the time during Hanukkah. I love them all, all during the year. I mean, they don't have to have no holiday for me, baby. <laughs> so I'm beating these, and then I'm going to add a couple of eggs, which is going to just sort of give it enough... 
uh, texture to keep it uh, together. And then I have a little, a little baking powder. And that's just going to give it enough little poof, as we call it. And then just a tiny, tiny bit of flour just to sort of hold it all together. Okay. Now, that wasn't like anything major. Season them. You got to season the potatoes. I'm using a little bit of salt. I'm using a fresh ground pepper. Get it really good and season the onions. And then what you want to do is you want to start folding in the egg mixture, the onions, a little bit of the flour just to hold it together. And then you can serve these with a creme fraiche. You could serve this with uh, sour cream. Uh, you can, there's so many things that you can do with these. Um, and I'm going to show you when we're going to start these. I got a little saute pan. Most people, the, the trick for a potato pancake or a locker is that you don't want to have the heat too, too high. Uh, you want to add a little bit of oil in the pan. Again, I'm using olive oil. You just want to sort of let that get to the right temperature. And then what you do with the onions and potato, you start forming them. Once this is all mixed, uh, mixed together, what you're going to do is you're going to start forming them as big as you like them. Sometimes I like mine like as big as, you know, car tires, you know, just like, you know, <laughs> don't fool around, you know, two, three bites. And then once you do that and you just sort of press them together, that little technique that I'm doing, and then we'll begin to start putting them in the oil. And you want to make sure that the oil is somewhat hot before you add the potato, because if you add the potato to a cold oil, I assure you, it's going to stick. And if you want them bigger, sometimes they fill the whole pan up. Sometimes they do them individual like this. We're going to start frying them up. And when we come back, I'm going to show you how we're going to take these and kick them up a notch. Stick around. <laughs> Favorite holiday food? Turkey, ham, stewed tomatoes, corn pudding, southern food. I'm from Kentucky, so you gotta love that. Hey, 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 welcome back. Give it up, Todd Gibson Cliff, everybody. Yeah. All right, if you're just joining us back, shame on you, because we're doing a little special dish, holiday celebrations, and right now we're in Hanukkah. We're doing these latkes right here. You can see what I've done is I've kind of gotten them golden brown. And what you want to do, you want to be very careful with them, but to me, you got to keep, when they start getting golden brown, you got to keep flipping them over. Because what you want to do is make sure that the potato is cooked all the way through. And, um, it's not just going to do that on one side. So you want to do that. Plus, the thing about potato, it's just like, it's just waiting there, you know? It's just like, season me, please. <laughs> it doesn't matter what culture you're in. It doesn't matter where in the world you are. You can always say to yourself, self, do I want to kick it up a notch right now or no? <laughs> yeah. So, you can, like, get a little bit of hot sauce like this, right? Add a little bit of hot sauce like that. It doesn't matter. You can get a little pinch of that right there and just go, bam, like that. And you can kick it up another notch, you see? All right. I hate when that happens. All right. So, now, traditionally, another big argument. I love that. Food argument. Should you serve sour cream or should you serve applesauce? I mean, you're kind of from the applesauce school, and I love that. And then um, there's sour cream on that side. See, what I say is this. My kind of guy. All right, not to offend anybody, but here's the deal. All right, watch how we're gonna flip these. I got this working here. See that? I got this heat on a little bit higher than, the, than this back one here. But you wanna be sure, folks, the thing with potato, and then we're gonna move on. When they're hot like this, 
and you flip in the potatoes, you want to be sure to season them so they taste delicious. When you turn them like that, it's that like, come on, season me thing. It's like, see, you just a little bit. Now, if that offends you, I'm sorry. Give me a little, a little pepper music there, Doc. Oh, yeah, babe. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Door number one over here, we're going to have one there. And then we're going to have door number two right over here. And then uh, we'll have door number three right over here. So we'll satisfy everybody right now. We'll do one traditional, a little sour cream. All right, a lot of sour cream. <laughs> We'll do one applesauce. A lot of applesauce. And then we'll do one just emeraldized, where we do a little sour cream. Then you just do just a tiny coolie like this of like applesauce. And then you come and you just get some awesome beluga caviar and you go like that. And then you get a little bit of chives like this, and you just go, bam! See how easy it is. Happy Hanukkah. How's that? All right. I'm going to put these over here for you guys. You got to remember, make some friends. Of course, of course if you don't want to get, like, hit in the back, you may want to give her the applesauce <laughs> one. All right, now we're going, like, Total different culture. And um, basically for Christmas. You know, a lot of people do hams for the holidays. And they're like, okay. They're like, okay, so it's another ham. It's kind of like another turkey, you know. So we took a little survey, thanks to a lot of you that uh, use the internet, you know, that foodtv.com emerald page. And um, we found out that these days, you can find these just about anywhere in America right now. They are sugar cane, they call them swizzles. They're sticks, is what I say. They're, they're like sugar cane sticks. And uh, I did this uh, a long time ago, but I want to kind of show you this, this really kicked up ham. Sometimes you got to bring the cleaver out for this. <laughs> I hate to do that, but the reason why I want to show you is because with these sticks, you know, you don't have like a table bandsaw at home in the kitchen, so you got to kind of like make an angle on them like that. No big deal. You can do it with a knife too. All right. You're impressed. <laughs> then, these hams that you can get come spirally cut. No punt with those spirally cut ham companies because this is our own deal. Then. The thing is, is that this is just full of cane sugar, natural sugar. So what I like to do is I like to take these sugar sticks, and I like to start sticking them in like this. Not because it did anything to me, <laughs> but you want to talk about good. So we're doing the swizzle stick thing all over the place. What's going to happen is that when this thing starts to bake, and this ham has already been cooked. See, and when they break like that, I don't get all, like, worried. People panic. That's when I play hide-and-seek like that. I just put it right under there. See? Now, we got the sw swizzle sticks going in here of sugar. Now, we're going to hog tie it. Basically, what I mean by that is that we're going to take this butcher's twine that I cut. Why am I doing this? I'm doing this because... I want to keep the ham as moist as possible that it's been scored. Now, if you have a ham that you buy that's not been scored like that or pre-sliced, that's okay. You can make the call whether you want to tie it or not tie it. The key is, is once we get all of these sticks in here and we got it tied, is this incredible, delicious glaze that we're going to base this with. If I were you, it would be a good time right now to go get one of those, you know, things 
while we hogtie the ham. Stick around, we'll be right back. <laughs> Season's greetings, Emerald. I'd like to wish a happy holiday to my family, the Cross family from New Jersey. Happy, happy holidays, holidays, Emerald. Hey, 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 welcome back. How's everybody doing, all right? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. OK. Sleepy crowd. <laughs> OK, so. We've got our ham completely done right now with the sugar swizzler sticks inside. You don't have to do that if you don't want, but boy, it sure tastes good. Now, here's the next thing that's going to make it taste good. You can try this on chicken if you don't like ham. You can do it on a turkey. You can do this on a whole breast of turkey. You can do it on ribs. Check this out. I got a little bit of brown sugar, and uh, you want to just sort of Take out them hard lumps of the brown sugar. And then we're going to flavor it up a little bit. I've got a little bit of nutmeg and allspice. I have a little cinnamon in them and a little bit of mace, not the kind you spray. <laughs> well, you got to clarify that here in New York City. <laughs> well, there's nothing wrong with that. It's a safety thing. Jeez. Now, I've got cane syrup. Oh, I love that cane syrup thing. And then I've got molasses. I know, that makes me happy too. It's the cane syrup molasses combo. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some dark corn syrup as well. Oh yeah, it's a one, two, three punch. I know. So now you get that in there. Ooh, I love when it does that. It's like, ooh. Just want to rub it all over you. <laughs> well, it's a food of love thing, I'm sorry. Okay, now, let me show you a trick. You'd want to dissolve all of that sugar. You see how I'm dissolving it in the sugar like that? Try to get as many of those lumps out of there as you can. And you kind of got like this paste going. Can you smell that? I know. I just like want to dip my hand in there. <laughs> hey, George! All right, I got dry mustard. You know you guys are guilty of that. I mean, it's like everybody has like this container of like this yellow label dry mustard, yet nobody uses it, you know? It's like hardly ever do you like use that. Well, this is one of those things to try to use that up, you know? The pantry police is here. <laughs> got a little bit of that dry mustard with a little baby, this is a little baby. Yeah, see? It's been good. Got all kinds of gadgets. Okay, so now we're gonna dissolve that mustard in just a little bit of water. If we had more mustard inside of this water, meaning the proportion of mustard to water, we'd have hot mustard, Chinese hot mustard that you would get at a Chinese restaurant. See that? And you didn't know what to do with that can. What this is gonna do is kinda spice it up a little bit. The glaze, you see? Just spices it up a little bit. And that's when you can ask yourself, do I wanna add a little bit of salt? Yes. <laughs> see, my mind works like that, you see? And then you could say, well, do I want a little essence? Okay. Yeah, yeah see? And so on and so on. If you wanna kick it up a notch more, you can. Here's the deal. This is the best pot now. You're not gonna believe what goes great with this. And we have them in the house all the time, this time of the holiday. It's just taking apples and pears, okay? You take apples and pears, you core them, and you just take the apples and pears around like this. You don't have to peel them, just wash them like we did here. You wanna talk about good. Now you might notice that I have these green apples because they're called Granny Smith, because they bake. They're really good baking apples. When they bake, they get really happy. Now, 
This is when you take the glaze and you just start letting it ooze like this on the ham a little at a time. You see that? The string and all, the string will be happy too. <laughs> then you start brushing it, getting it in there. And then you want to start brushing your fruits. See what I'm doing here? And then you put the oven on 350 degrees. 350 degrees. We don't want to have the oven too high because then that will char the apples and stuff. You want to really make it cook tender. Then you go back and you ooze a little bit more on the ham like that, you see? Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, I could just do this for days. I'm a sugar painter. Now, you save yourself a little bit like that because after the first 20, 30 minutes it goes in there, you want to go back and you want to rebaste it. And then it's going to start bubbling and oozing. And then the greatest thing with this too, I mean, you could do smothered greens with this. I decided to just do some very simple baking powder biscuits. I figured, why not? Right? Okay. So after you get it inside of the oven, and then it goes another 30 minutes, and the fruit starts getting tender. Whew. That's how that thing looks. And then, biscuits only take about 15 minutes to bake. These are just like beautifully golden brown. Now watch what we're gonna do with these. All right, if you wanna serve it family style, First thing that you do, you come and rescue the ham. And if you don't want to, that's okay. So we're going to just untie it. But now you're going to start seeing. You see how it's, since we've cut it, you see how it's starting to open up like that? If you have any basting stuff left, you could do like one more little, small little basting thing on it. So I decided then what we're going to do. Oh, man, it's, huh, huh, you ought to taste it. <laughs> We're going to put it right inside of here, just like this. How's that look for you guys? Uh, okay. Then, I had some spoons, but, oh, here we go. They gave one back. I got some apples. Look at how sugar-coated and glazed they are. You see that? How nice and tender that they look like this? And when you pop them in your mouth, they're like little candies. Then we take that apples like this, family style. Now, if you wanted to plate it, you could just start serving a couple of pieces of your ham with a little bit of your fruit like this. Doc, not bad, huh? Looks good, man. Then. What I like to do for decoration is just put a bunch of these biscuits around like this, you see? Because then when you come out, the kids just start screaming because they're happy, happy. <laughs> Don't forget me! So, and it's a very simple presentation. Yeah, 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 as you can see. Just like that. Now, one more trick before the garnish. I like to show the final garnish. Hold your rack like this, all right? and do the rest of that gooey stuff just like that over there. Oh yeah, I love that too. And then you can always just kind of go, BAM! Just like that. Stick around, we'll be right back. Pork tenderloin coming up. Got this. My favorite holiday feast is Christmas. We, we start off with antipasta, then we have uh, soup, then we have lasagna, then maybe a turkey, then we have uh, p sweet potatoes, fried potatoes, uh, pork roast, and then we end up uh, 
basically falling asleep afterwards. Holiday feast here. I remember Lagasse, and if you just joined us, shame on you, because we're having a kicked up holiday feast tonight. We've started celebrating Hanukkah with latkes that were just delicious, some with applesauce, some with sour cream, some you should have been there. And then we just did this hog tied ham with the sugar glaze and fruits. My friends, some of them right now are getting a little uh, taste of that with roasted pears and apples and Kwanzaa right now. Uh, I'm going to start one of the components for this dish because the dish is a pork tenderloin dish and uh, we're in another culture now and uh, another celebration and uh, sometimes they're served with oysters, sometimes they're served not, sometimes they're done with one of those unbelievable, I think a lot of the Creole Caribbean style influences the food there, uh, but one of the key components is smothered black eyed peas. And uh, I serve these a lot at the restaurant. We serve them a lot all year long. And I want to show you just kind of how it's so simple to do this. I love this food. Now, I got my little pot here. And I'm going to start with a little bit of olive oil. Uh, and uh, just kind of get that heated up a little bit. Real simple. And uh, once that does start getting heated up, the first thing that we're going to start with is we're going to start with a couple of small onions that we just chopped up, not too big, not too small, and just sort of add those onions in there. Um, starting to hear that sizzle. You got any sizzle music, Doc? Thank you. And then um, we're just going to add a little bit of salt. We got, a, we got a sleepy crowd on our hands tonight. I think they think they're at that other late night show, you know what I mean? Salt and pepper to season them onions up good. And not only salt and pepper, but basically, this is time. See, that's 12 o'clock, <laughs> 6 o'clock, 2 o'clock's over here. See, it's slowly the... Anyhow, this is time. And a lot of people, when they use fresh thyme, they think, well, you know, you have to take it off the, the branch and you're supposed to strip the, you know, strip the... Come on. <laughs> Get a life. It's time. When it's done cooking, you'll know it's time. And I got a few bay leaves that I'm going to add in there. Why did, why did we add them in there right now is because we want to get that spice going with the onions. Can you smell that already? How, how that's just... How things in Fall River, okay? Keeping an eye on things for me? You didn't have any sightings of Hilda there last week, did you? She was around, I heard. Yeah. All right, so we got that going on now. And Can you smell that? You see, you see how we just sort of extracted that fresh herb like that? Because now what we're going to do is we're going to add a couple of cloves of garlic, all right? Yeah, you know. Well, you know, add as much as you want. You want two cloves with the recipe, uh, you know, four. ask for. You can add four, six, eight. I'd add 30 myself at least, you know, just kind of all the garlic in there. And then good old smoked sausage, okay? You can use andouille, you could use chadis, you could use, it's a, yes, this is a smoked pork sausage. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. Cut it in half, slice it about a quarter of an inch. We're gonna add that smoked sausage in there. And we're gonna start getting some of that smoky flavor. Now, another thing that I love to use is ham hocks. Ham hocks is another wonderful thing. That, that's me. But then again, I don't need a holiday to have ham hocks. <laughs> ham hocks are a beautiful thing every day. All right, now we got that going on. I got some soaked black-eyed peas. And there's a great season around the holiday time, too, in the South, when the fresh field peas are available. Nice season of them. You can get them, and they just smell. You can smell as you're driving along. Now, this gets me uh, going on these uh, legumes, which is what that is, beans. Could be red beans, white beans, black beans, lentil beans, any kind of beans you have, or black-eyed peas like we have right here. People are always like the police, you know? You're not supposed to season your beans until they start to cook. <laughs> Who made you the bean god? <laughs> so, 
I season my beans as they start to cook. And then I come back and I re-season my beans after they start to pop. <laughs> so, then what I do is I use, you could use chicken stock, water. If you're gonna use water, just make sure you season it. You wanna bring this up to a boil now, folks, and then what you wanna do, you don't let it go wild. You just put it on simmer. Just let it start getting happy. And this evaporation things and those little peas are in there smiling away. And, and then as they cook like that, you see, they begin to stop popping like these are right here. And then how do you know they're popping? Well, you can see that right here. You're seeing when they like kind of just like go pop like that, you know they're ready. This is when you want to go now and taste them and see how you have to adjust the seasoning. You want kick it up a notch and add cayenne, bam. You want to add a little more salt, bam. You, want, you know, whatever, whatever, like, unless you're a closet bammer. <laughs> now, and there are a lot of those out there. Now I got this tenderloin of pork. Oh yeah, here's a big bad boy here. So now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a knife. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this pork loin after it's trimmed, make a little cut like that. See that, we're gonna open it up. We're gonna take this side like this and we're gonna open it up. We're gonna take this and we're gonna open it up. Why are we doing this to this poor pork loin? Jeez, oh. Because we're gonna pound it. You're gonna take your frustrations out and you're gonna be able to pound it. And you get on and on pound that pork like that. Because we're gonna make a, like a little roulade. When you, when, if you just like don't touch the dial, you'll see when we come back. Stick around. We'll be right back. <laughs> Happy holidays. Happy holidays, Emerald. I'm wishing you a very safe holiday, Mom. Those of you joining us now, we're doing a little dish for Kwanzaa, and we got those black eyed peas. Remember what I said, after they stop popping, that's when you want to taste them, that's when you want to ask yourself, Self, do I want to kick it up a notch? Yeah. Generally, that's what my mind says, too, and that's maybe you want to add a little hot sauce to kick it up a couple of notches like that, you know? Just get a little bit like that and just kind of... Yeah. All right, we're getting there, we're getting there, we're awake now. Then I just started some bacon, slowly just sort of rendering out. Because what I want to show you is that, you see, you just kind of keep doing that. Patience. And then you open up that pork, that pork loin is just like that. You can do it much smaller also. You can do it much smaller with a pork loin, a pork tenderloin, excuse me. This is a pork loin. Trim it up, make those slices like I did, pound it out. You want to use some butcher's paper, plastic wrap will also. Keep pounding it out, getting about a half an inch thick. Watch what we're gonna do. Now we got this bacon. We're gonna make sure it's not sticking. We're rendering it out like this so that it's almost crispy. Couple of reasons why, you've heard me say it before many, many times when we're cooking. When you're working with ham flavoring like this or perhaps even sausage, but particularly with bacon, you have to start the bacon first because the next ingredient going in there is gonna be some onion and celery. And the natural water in onion and celery, it won't let the bacon get crisp. That's why you want to cook the bacon first, okay? Once it starts to get crisp like that, whatever level it's at, and when you start adding the onions, that's where the bacon's gonna stay at. Now, we got a good crisp like that for me, where it's not chewy, that's when I'm gonna add the onions next. And then I'm gonna add the celery as well. You wanna add bell pepper, you can add bell pepper. You wanna add carrot, you can add carrot. Whatever turns you on. Now, naturally when the uh, bacons that we begin to stop buying around here, or anywhere naturally because they're cured, they have a little bit of salt to them. So you wanna go easy on the salt. What I like to do now is I just use a little bit of fresh ground pepper like that. <laughs> About 40 notches, you know. Do you wanna add a little bit of garlic? Yeah, you can add about, you know, 20 cloves like that, you know. Now, you can buy cornbread, you can make cornbread, it ain't no big deal, okay? 
What we did, you can use muffins too. I got a little bit of cornbread right here. And then a classic dish that they use is with oysters. And we do this in New Orleans a lot as well. I dug some oysters like this, one of them little containers that you buy in a store, chopped them up with a knife, saved the juice. Once like the bacon, onions, celery gets happy, happy in there, and the garlic, here's what we're gonna then do. Take that off the skillet, put it into the cornbread. You with me over there, Doc? With you, baby. All right, baby, because I'm telling you, we're gonna... Then, just sort of mix that around a little bit. You want more garlic? Great. You want green onions? We're gonna add some oysters in there now. Save that juice of the oysters first. Look at that. Oh, I love that stuff. That's like juice of love right there, you know, it just... Now, here's what we're gonna do. If it's not too wet, you can always add a little bit more cornbread. If it's too dry, you have to add a little bit more liquid. You want it somewhat wet, okay, because we're gonna... Now, I'm adding cayenne pepper those of you out there. You can always add a little bit of water to make it just a little bit more wet like this. The reason why, you don't want to start with the dry stuffing because then when you bake it in the oven, it's even going to get drier. So you want to have it a little bit moist so that that evaporation thing, you know, the oven gets happy, big smile on their face, you know? All right, now here's the deal. I take a little bit of the essence, season up the inside of that pork like that. Oh yeah, happy, happy. Take the stuffing. Look, be senseless. It's kind of a thing. You know, cooking's a little bit like, you know, common sense. You know what I mean? I mean, you're not going to put, if you got all of that in there and, you know, it's, you know, come on. Forget about it. Now, you can always bake the stuffing off, off to the side. The trick is, is packing it, just like I'm doing right here. Then you roll this over, okay? Packing it over like that. And then you roll this one over here like this. Okay? If some of the stuffing falls out, don't worry about it. It's not like you're not going to like, you know, relax. All right, now, how do I tie it? Very simple, you tie it. You get some butcher's twine like this, you see? Little rope, little butcher's twine. You start at the end. Right, Phil? Okay. <laughs> then what we do is we start like this. It's my good buddy over here. And then we start tying it up like this. Why? Because we don't want that stuffing. We can always come and trim up that rope. We're going to steam like this. We're going to keep tying it up. Then, I got this cane syrup from Louisiana. Once we get it all tied up, we're going to just like glaze the whole pork tenderloin with essence and cane syrup, and we're going to roast it in the oven. And when we come back, it's pork tenderloin, baby. Stick around. Season's greetings, everyone. Bam! Season's greetings, Emerald. Happy holidays to you. Hey, we're back. We're back, everybody. We've got our pork, pork loin with oyster dressing rolled up, celebrating Kwanzaa. And, uh, you know, Kwanzaa's been a fairly new tradition holiday. Not that the holiday has been but it's been fairly new since the uh, 66. Where's Rochelle Brown? Rochelle, Here Kwanzaa, baby. Kwanzaa means the first fruits of vegetables. And during Kwanzaa, we celebrate seven different days that mean seven di different things. And Doc's going to tell us exactly what those seven days mean. Well, All right, Doc, have, let it on, baby. We have Umoja, Kutichakalia, Ujima, Ujama, Nia, Kuumba, and Imani. All right, Kwanzaa, everybody. Yeah, now look, you see that? I, I put that cane syrup on there, and then what you do, you bake that in the oven, and that oyster dressing just like starts getting happy, 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 happy. And then what you do is you let that cool a little bit. Hey, let me give you a little trick. See that juice right there? You put that in a little sauce pot, and you flame it with some brandy. You want to talk about good. Now watch how this comes out. 
Oh, wait, you ain't seen nothing yet. I like to take those black eyed peas on the bottom of that dish like that. You see that? I take a slice of that really delicious oyster stuffed pork. Watch out for the string. You see that? And another tradition, fried sweet potatoes that'll make you happy, happy, happy. That's our holiday treat. I'm Emma Lagasse. See you tomorrow, everybody.